yes guys yes people welcome back to the channel welcome back to another episode of carefree reacts big up to every single one of you that's locked in you guys already know what to do as soon as you get into the channel hit the like button subscribe Hit the super chat if you guys want to be a part of the super chat lottery because that is still running until the end of the month. And let's get into the main topic because I knew this was going to start bum uh, bubbling around sooner or later, but I didn't expect it to be so soon. The question, the big question is going around after City's collapse against Spurs. Are Chelsea in a title race? Chelsea now being thrown around in the title race. It has been a minute since we've been involved in these conversations. And I actually like that people are daring to put us in these talks. I kind of expected it because we do know the run that Chelsea are, um, have coming up. Aston Villa, which is probably the most difficult game of the month. Then Southampton, Spurs away, which is always light work, light work lane and all that. Brentford at home, Everton away, Fulham at home. Ipswich away, Crystal Palace away, Bournemouth at home, Wolves um, at home, and then we travel to the Etihad at the end of January. So we do have a very favourable run of fixtures coming around. And I do kind of think this conversation is only going to keep rumbling on and on as the weeks go, as long as we continue to do our job, especially if we win that top four six-pointer against Aston Villa, because that game is absolutely massive for us. They are our biggest top four contenders. Don't get it twisted. They're the ones that were there last season. They're the ones that will probably be in the race with us at the end of the season as well. We have to win that game. We have to. But I am not allowing this media narrative to run so soon. No, 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 no. Not after all the bogus narratives that I saw running around about our football club over the last year or two. You guys have all been here in the trenches with me, having to defend this football club and these players with our lives. The amount of BS narratives, the amount of waffle that we've seen get spoken about our club. And now people want to try and put the expectation of a title race on us. Really? Just because the rest of you, man, can't do your jobs consistently and we're keeping track with you lot. Our aim was meant to be top four, and people didn't even expect us to do that. Let me bring up some quotes. Let me bring up some quotes, because you guys know I'm very good at this. Shout out a man like Jamie Carragher said getting rid of Pochettino was a huge mistake, and he sees us finishing 7-4 below. This was back in August. This was back in August. This guy also tried to run narratives about Chelsea stockpiling, saying Chelsea are not a young and exciting team. That was one of the biggest quotes that we had from him. Also, he was talking about how we're unnecessarily buying players. Players don't shouldn't sign for Chelsea. Where is Jao Felix getting changed? Those were the questions that he wanted to ask. Now people are trying to put us in the title race. Let, let's go back to some of our most infuriating clips from the overlap back in the day. You guys remember this intolerable woman that they brought on who don't even really rep Chelsea like that. If you check her account, she's a historian. She ain't she ain't no hardcore Chelsea fan or nothing like that. And she was running narratives like this. We th See, the problem is that the match-going fans are a minority and they don't care. They either get it and they don't care or they don't get it. I mean, they were told at the very highest end of inside the club by someone who's not there anymore um you need whatever the hell she's waffling about to go and talk to the fans and like if there is a plan tell them what it is and they'll get behind you but also now now i've got she's saying like clear like needed to speak more to the fans and explain the project even though man like roman abramovich we all love roman abramovich this guy never spoke i think the only time we heard roman abramovich speak was when he wrote a little 10-year letter for us on the 10-year anniversary. And um, when he did that My Special Day thing on Sky Sports, rest in peace to Oran Tully, my brother, every single time. That's the only time that we've heard Abramovich talk, yet they wanted Clear Lake to be open with Chelsea. And that washed for a while. We saw progression. We finally kind of broke our heads above water and saw something better at the end of last season. All because we won five games in a row. And then, I mean, if, if he gets to swear, I get to swear about it. <laughs> then they shit the bed and get rid of the manager. And, and we're back. I mean, at the end of last season, I might have said to you, 
I want to go for top four next season. That, that's why I see us back up there challenging. Now, I just like put us anywhere in the top half of the table and whatever. But yeah, like put us anywhere in the top half of the table and whenever and whatever. But here we are now trying to run title race narratives. V very interesting. Very interesting. Sh shout out. Actually, not even shout out to this guy. This guy is like one of the most infuriating people that I've ever had to try and deal with. Man like Dean CFC, one of the most intolerable potch peggers um, on Twitter, talking about if Chelsea don't beat Bournemouth, I'm launching my largest manager out campaign in human history. Just for reference, this brother, type in his name in Pochettino. You guys are going to get an insane amount of Pochettino prop. Oh, Poch managed 18, 18 of these games in the 2024 table. All of this crap. Um, Pochettino was right about Jao Felix not being the perfect fit. Um, Enzo's been higher up on the Maresca system than Pochettino. Poch was in charge for 75% of these games. Blah, blah, blah. I'm not even going to bother to keep scrolling down. But if you type his name and Pochettino, you will see the amount of shameless prop that this guy's been doing. Don't forget him saying manager out if we don't beat Bournemouth in September. Now... This Liverpool and Chelsea title race will be one for the ages. The flip-flopping that I'm seeing from some people, be it the media and being Chelsea fans, is ridiculously shameless. You man wanted to write off this football club from the start. From the start. And now you want to put these expectations on these players when the aim was, uh, was just for us to get back into the top four and to keep it stepping from there. No. No. We are not doing this. We are not doing this because I've called this for the last two months. These men will bring up Chelsea, big up our players, big up our club, all to just have it crashing down when they drop unrealistic expectations on these players' heads. My aim is top four and the trophy, and we're going to get that trophy because we're going to walk the conference league. I don't need to hear anything other than that. Now... You can talk to me about a title race if we're in that position around February, March. Because for me, if you can hold that consistency to that period, I'm going to believe you can hold it for another 10 to 12 games after that point. But we have to get to that point first. Why have those expectations of the players from this point when we're not even clear? Like the last time we won the league was 16-17. Nobody expected us to win the league that season either. But at least we had players that had already done it. And also, we're on a, a streak so insane. 13 wins in a row. About seven or eight of them came without a goal even being conceded. And we were clear, clear top of the table. Then I can hear it. Because we're clear at the top of the table. For now, we're not. We need Liverpool to get a result against City so we can climb above City to second. And then we're what, like nine points off Liverpool? Unless they draw. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We are nine points off Liverpool. If they draw, we win. We can claw that back to seven. But we're not in touching distance of Liverpool. So why have those expectations? A and also, all, all due respect, Robert Sanchez is, is not winning the Premier League as a starting goalkeeper. I, I have not seen anything near that level. So, if you want to ask me how Chelsea can be in a title race, we need to be active in January. We need to be active and fast. You go and get an experienced goalkeeper, a proven goalkeeper, I might believe in it. An experienced centre-back as well, I think that would help too. Fafana and Colwell are starting to look a little bit more solid. So I don't really want to break up that partnership. But if you can bring in some good competition, if you can bring in somebody that's a level above them, go do it. I mean, I know that there is an experienced centre-back in Barcelona that isn't a part of their squad, that isn't getting any minutes and like might have to go and look for a new club. And who, who knows? We might just be able to, to bring them back down to London. You never know. Now, if we were to make that sort of move, may, maybe I'll start listening to these conversations a little bit more. Maybe. But for now, sit back and enjoy the ride, my guys. Why are we going to throw these unrealistic expectations onto this football club? Because if that's not the expectation, why do it? And if that's the expectation, you're going to be disappointed in the end of the season if we don't end up winning the league, because you've now put that expectation on the players. For now, for the first time in years, 
we're excited to watch Chelsea play. For the first time in years, we're actually enjoying watching Chelsea play. For the first time in years, there seems to be a plan. There seems to be an actual structure, an actual philosophy. Just let the man cook. And if in a couple months' time, we can realistically say that we're in a title race, brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. I cannot ask for more than that. But let's get to that point first. As of now, a game at a time. A game at a time. For all the rivals watching Chelsea, thinking, oh, they could be in a title race. I think it's going to be a race for second, personally, the way things are going. And Liverpool are just going to run away with the league. But being second don't make you in a title race by default. You have to be within touching distance of your rivals. And unless Liverpool start dropping points and moving complacent, I don't see that. So put it on standby. Put it on standby. We, we don't need to put those expectations on these players so soon. <laughs> But now, I'm just glad that people are even daring to do it. Shows where we've gone. Everyone was saying, oh, you're going to be 12th in Christmas. You're going to be Maresca out by Christmas. All of that. We are nearly at December. And anyone who's Maresca out is a moron. So what are we saying now? <laughs> all you man who tried to say we should have kept Pochettino. I hope you all feel as stupid as you lot looked for the last year. Hold that. Hold that. And with that, I am out. So big up to every single one of you that's locked in. Hit the like button, subscribe, all of that. Up the Chels. And to all the rivals, don't worry about us. We're a mid-table mess. We're overspending. We're, we've got too many players. Don't worry about us. Just go do your thing. Focus on your washed institutions. And let the Chels just keep on moving. Take care. Like, subscribe, all of that. We'll be back tomorrow. And up the damn Chels. Up the Chels. Let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below as well. Big up, guys.